Alrighty, so uh, today for our bonus lesson, our lunch lesson, um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to draw anime slash manga. Um, I'm actually going to be drawing two characters today. One of them is going to be an existing character, and then I'm going to walk you guys through the process of designing your own character. One thing that I hear a lot from folks is, um, again, sort of asking the question, well, how do I draw anime or manga? How do I get better at drawing that? Um, and a lot of folks tend to focus on that as uh, sort of the beginning step, but they don't understand that you actually have to work on the basics. You have to work on the fundamentals first, and then you guys can actually get better at drawing in the style of your choice. The idea is that the foundation is all of that stuff that you thought was boring, because again, it's helping you observe the world around you. And when you see folks who are successful artists, uh, because they have built on this foundation of, again, very basic stuff, anatomy, shading, value, um, the building blocks of good art, um, but a lot of folks only see sort of the house that's built on top of this foundation. And they think to themselves, like, wow, that's such a cool house. I wish I could do that. When you're a beginning artist, it can be very tempting to look at all of this cool stuff and think to yourself, wow, I'm never going to be able to do that or to just focus on uh, all the things that you see, not realizing that you have to build the foundation for these things to go on top of. Um, so we are going to be talking again about how to draw in a particular style, but I do want to emphasize to you guys, if you don't have a very good grasp of anatomy, so like the structure of the face or how to draw the human body or the hands, uh, how to shade stuff, and understand how light interacts with different forms. Um, if you don't understand how value works, if all of your drawings, all of your artwork is just in one value. Again, there's a lot that goes into the foundation um, and that's something that you have to build up before you can get to all of this other cool stuff. So, I'm actually gonna be doing two drawings. I forget if I mention this. I'm going to be doing one done in a traditional uh, medium. And the second one I'm going to do digitally for them. So for the first one, um, like I said, I'm going to be drawing an existing character. Um, so since some people asked about anime and manga, that kind of reminded me of when I was back in high school and uh, was not getting into it, not getting into anime, but uh, rather getting into more of it. Uh, and one of the series that came out around that time was Naruto. So to date myself, this was when it actually first came to the US. Um, and I thought it was super cool, the story about like ninjas and stuff. And one of the characters is Kakashi. So that is who I'm going to be drawing today. Um, one of my favorite characters. So the uh, first point that you guys want to do whenever you're drawing something is to pull up references of the thing that you're going to draw. So on my computer, on my Chromebook, I have a bunch of pictures of him. I'm going to be referencing back to these uh, every time I am drawing him. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make some thumbnails of the pose that I want him to be in. This is a concept that we've talked about before. Remember, thumbnails are just very small, very quick drawings uh, that help you plan out a drawing before you actually commit a ton of time to it. So for my thumbnails, um, I'm, I'm actually just going to go ahead and use my ballpoint pen because this is going to force me to draw fast. I'm not going to worry about making mistakes because I can't erase this. So I'm going to do a handful of these because uh, I'm not exactly sure like what pose I want him to be in. Here. So one thing I'm also considering um, is a topic that we haven't really touched on. We, we might have talked about it just a little bit in our figure drawing segment was this idea of the line of action. So the line of action is a single line that can be used to describe a character's movement. So you'll notice I've gone ahead and drawn uh, a bright pink line down the line of action on each of these thumbnails. This is not a necessary part of the thumbnailing process, um, but it's helpful to visualize how dynamic your person is going to be. Um, so maybe we'll do, uh, actually, I think I like this one. I've got my final paper. I already have my uh, got my pose all planned out, and so I am going to use a mechanical pencil. 
So I've got my thumbnails off to one side. I'm uh, using that as a reference for my drawing. I'm going to go ahead and get that line of action, which again is that sort of diagonal line that describes the overall motion of whatever this figure is doing. So now that we have this, we can start building on top of this. Um, I'm actually going to start cleaning up some of these lines, the guidelines that I don't necessarily need, because right now um, it looks like so much spaghetti. I am going to start adding um, some of the finer details. Again, still using my mechanical pencil. So right now we have kind of this mannequin head. You can't see where he's looking. Um, so I'm going to start, again, adding in details like, where's he looking? Okay, cool. So we have a final drawing for the most part. It is clean enough for me to go ahead and start inking. Now, uh, when you are inking, um, you can use a number of different tools. I'm actually going to use um, probably just a Sharpie because that's a tool that most of you have. You could also use, if you have them, um, art pens. I happen to have um, a few on hand. They're called microns. Uh, they come in a variety pack, a number of different uh, widths. So I have a very small one, the, the 01 micron. It's got a teeny little tip. Um, I also have one that is uh, an 8 or 08, and that one's a little bit bigger. Um, I might use one of these, might not. Uh, like I said, I want to try to use stuff that you guys have on hand, so I'm going to stick with probably this um, Sharpie. Alright, so again, my sketch is clean. I'm just going to go ahead and start inking. Now, I will say this. A lot of people uh, are scared of this step because they're scared of making a mistake. And the uh, strange thing about drawing is I find the harder you try to make something look good, the less, it, the less chance there is of it turning out looking good. So when you get to the stage, just relax. Just go ahead and ink. Um, there's always going to be mistakes, and you just have to you just have to go with it. You just have to plan for it. Um, and the way that you get better at inking is to just go ahead and do it without necessarily being worried about making a mistake. If you make a mistake, so what? You can always fix it. Or you make a mistake, and it's like okay, well, you made a mistake. Learn from that, and just move on.
I've already gone ahead and erased all of the stray marks and guidelines that I had on my drawing. I'm going to go ahead and start coloring. Uh, so like I mentioned before, this is going to be a traditional piece, meaning I'm using uh, like real world art supplies. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using uh, some dollar store markers that I got. I actually have quite a few of them. Um, so these are fairly inexpensive markers. They're basically the cheap version of Copic markers, which are pretty pricey. Um, I actually do have one here. These are like five bucks a pop. Um, these ones, though, came in like a two pack for a buck fifty, so cheap. So I'm, again, uh, I'm not too precious about the work that I do with them because they are a very cheap art supply. And again, I'm focused more on having fun. So I have my line art. I'm going to start coloring it. Uh, one thing with markers is I'm going to start, uh, much like with paint, I'm going to start with the lightest colors first. Uh, Kakashi is a very uh, pale-skinned individual, um, so I'm going to start by uh, getting his color, his, his skin tone down. You'll also notice that I have a piece of test paper over here. I've actually gone ahead and made, uh, off camera, I made some uh, test marks so I could see what colors I needed. Um, I do recommend, again, for lots of things, that you have kind of a test marker, or a test paper, rather, sitting off to one side, so uh, you're not stuck making marks on your paper and realizing, oh no, that's not the right color, I don't want that. Um, I'm going to start with the lightest color present in the picture, which, like I said, is going to be his skin tone. Uh, Sharpie is not like the ideal uh, medium to be using, um, but like I said, I'm trying to use stuff that you guys would have access to, so um, if I have smudging, so be it. Since his hair is uh, spiky, fluffy. Um, I'm actually going to be treating each of these shapes as uh, like a triangle. So I'm not literally drawing in any of the shapes. Again, because his hair is so pale, uh, I'm actually drawing basically the shadow on the underside of it. All right, uh, so we've got our boy, Kashi, leaping through the air. I'm going to do another drawing, this time done digitally. 
चर्चा ठीक है आज का
I know for a long time, I was like petrified of making mistakes. I would make lines on a paper and then erase it, make lines on a paper and then erase it over and over and over again until I had to throw out the paper because I just erased too much. Uh, one of the best things I could have done for myself, uh, learning how to draw or and just being more confident in drawing was switching over to sketching and something I could not erase. So I actually do a lot of sketches uh, using ballpoint pen. It's cheap, you can't erase it. So if you make a mistake, you have to live with it. Um, but once you take that pressure off of yourself of having to try to make a perfect drawing, uh, because spoiler alert, your drawing's not gonna be perfect. You're going to look at it five minutes later and be like, ugh, I can't believe I drew that. So once you take the pressure off yourself of having to make a perfect drawing, um, you, you kind of free yourself up to actually make perfect drawings. And I think you have a lot more fun when you give yourself that opportunity to play around and just enjoy the process. So it sounds kind of hippy, hippy dippy, but um, like I said, it's one of the best things I could have done was just learning how to relax and have fun and to enjoy the process. And if you make a mistake, that's fine. You just improv. You either make it part of the drawing or you just say, you know what? I made a mistake. That's fine. You know, you can fix it later or just live with it. So um, I'm also inking this in this kind of off-brand Sharpie because um, I inked a drawing a while ago and realized, ooh, I actually like how this inks. Um, I like how the lines turn out. Um, it gives me kind of this uniform line, which is kind of cool. Um, so I would also encourage you guys is uh, lots of folks will ask, hey, what tools did so-and-so use? Um, because they think that the tools make you a better artist. Not necessarily true. I'm, uh, being in a Formula One car isn't going to make you a better driver. It's probably going to drive you into a wall a lot faster, but it doesn't magically make you a better driver. And the same thing is true of art. A lot of people focus on the tools, thinking that that's going to make them a better artist because they want a real quick way of improving. And the sad truth is, there is no quick way to improve. You just have to do it a lot. You just have to practice over and over and over again and make terrible drawing after terrible drawing um, and study and keep learning. And then you'll get better. But there's no quick way. <laughs> there's no magic bullet. You're not gonna get better overnight uh, without practice, without being afraid to make mistakes um, and yeah, to just forgive yourself and make those terrible drawings because that's a natural part of learning. You're not going to learn if every single drawing you make is a rousing success. You're going to learn from the mistakes that you make. You're going to learn from the bad drawings that you make. What do those shoes look like? Um, so again, don't be afraid to make make mistakes. I made plenty of mistakes. Um, again, I've got just sketchbooks upon sketchbooks of just terrible drawings, terrible drawings that I had to make before I could get to the good ones. And I learned from those. So it's okay to look at your drawings now and be like, "Ugh, can't believe I drew that." It's it's like a snapshot of where you were at artistically at this moment in time. Do his shoes even do that? I don't think they do. Oh well, mine does. <laughs> um, so again, it's, it's sort of a snapshot of where you're at. So you can look at your drawings from back then or now and say, wow, that's, you know, I've grown since then. Um, and again, it's a learning process, but there is no quick way. There's no magic bullet. Um, there's not going to be like 
a magic pen where you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to grant me the powers of awesome artistic hood. Um, no, you just got to practice. You just have to fill up sketchbooks with studies and drawings and practice, 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 um, and have fun. You got to have fun with it. All right, cool. So I've got my inked drawing. Um, it's all right. It's not the best drawing I've made, but I'm going to go ahead and erase my guidelines. So I've got my ink all down. Um, I'm actually going to give it a minute to dry. Um, I don't know how quick this Sharpie dries. And I've actually ruined perfectly good drawings by being very impatient and just erasing over basically puddles of ink, um, smearing over the drawing and making a mess. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back with the rest. 